Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kay Van Dabani. My very special guest today is Carla Rosenbaum, the author of Grotten Bitcoin. Carla, uh, uh, thank you so much for coming to my show. Um, you're in Sweden, right? Yeah, it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. All right, Khaled, um, I started reading your book um, before I went up, uh, to the conference in uh, Berlin, to the Lightning Conference, and um, I didn't finish it, I couldn't finish it, but it's a really great book, even for non-technical people, because I remember I, uh, I read The Mastering Bitcoin of Andreas Antonopoulos, and the majority of the book is really technical, heavy, heavy technical, but there are some chapters, some good, you know, uh, um, you know, um, sort of compact overviews and principles, explanations. So this is really what I loved about your book, because it's always about the question, why Bitcoin? What, what purpose does it fulfill? Where are we going with this? What does it do with us? You know, so uh, either, you know, uh, whether, whether it's technical or not technical, uh, so my first question to you is, Khaled, why did you write this book? Uh, that one is pretty easy because I was flattered uh, by Manning. Manning contacted me by uh, via email asking me if I wanted to write a book about, uh, well, they said blockchain. <laughs> uh, uh, and I replied back and said I wanted to, well, uh, that sounds interesting, but I would like to write a book about Bitcoin. Uh, so, uh, and they came back and said, oh, well, let's talk about it. And from there it went on. Um, so it was actually them asking me, uh, which was pretty flattering. So uh, that's why. <laughs> and also, I, I think there's a big gap in the Bitcoin book space, or there was at least. There was these books that you talked about that was very technical and focused on programming code. And then there were books for visionaries and economists. Um, and there was, there was no, really no book for people in between, like yourself, I guess, uh, who were like technically interested, but not necessarily developers. Uh, so I wanted to write this book for them. And also, I wanted, um, I wanted a book that I myself would have loved to read when I started out with Bitcoin. Um, it was... It was pretty tough back then to learn about Bitcoin uh, if you're not a, a you know, a cryptography expert. I was just a, you know, a normal uh, software developer. Uh, so to me, it was, it was pretty hard. Uh, I would have loved to read this, have read this book when I started out. Uh, so that's why I wrote this book to help uh, others. In the same situation. Great. Uh, so <clears throat> let me see. Uh, you have um, you have uh, uh, structured the book in a way um, um, that, first of all, it's uh, like uh, some of the other books also. It explains the what is the what's the what's the root cause uh, or what are the problems or you know where do we start off. So do you want to like, uh, you know, from, from your motivation, from the intention, how you structured it, uh, like talk, a, talk, a bit, talk, talk a little bit about it? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, as you say, um, I try to explain why technol the technology that we use, Bitcoin matters, why we need it. Uh, and I do that by, by building Bitcoin from scratch. Uh, in chapter two, we start out with a very uh, basic spreadsheet system that anybody, anybody can, uh, can understand. So it's a simple spreadsheet system uh, where uh, a central authority named Lisa uh, keeps uh, uh, updates this, this spreadsheet system. Whenever, whenever someone wants to pay, she, she is the central authority who updates the spreadsheet. And from there, we, we point out problems with, its, with this spreadsheet. Uh, for example, somebody can come to Lisa and say, hey, my name is, my name is uh, Kalle, and I want to move money to, to Bob. When in fact, uh, it's so Mallory can go and say, hey, I'm Kalle, please move money to Bob. And Lisa will just do that because she doesn't know everyone's face. Uh, 
so then we we add digital signatures to that system so that Lisa can verify everyone's digital sig signature when they move money. So, and, and the, the book continues like that for the, from chapter two to chapter eight. We just add new technology, we point out problems, and we add technology that fixes those problems. And, oh, sorry. I don't know what happened here. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, so, so up until chapter eight, we build up this system that we will end, we will end up with Bitcoin uh, at the end. And then we have a few more chapters after that uh, uh, with uh, you know, some bells and whistles on transactions and uh, I explain SegWit and upgrades to Bitcoin. But the main, the core chapters builds, builds Bitcoin from scratch by pointing out problems with the current system and we add uh, technology that fixes the problem. And I think that's, uh, that's, I like that process because uh, it's hard, it's, if, if I would explain Bitcoin as it is uh, from the very beginning, you need, you need a lot of context uh, in order to understand why transactions matter, uh, why digital signatures matter, or why proof of work matters. So that's, that's a good way to break down the system uh, to, to, yeah, to, to avoid this uh, circular uh, problem where every, everything is uh, intertwined as it is in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what I really find um, interesting is that you are a computer scientist and, um, um, and to, to explain this to, first of all, layman people, and also people who might have a, you know, a technical understanding or you know, understanding of the technical concepts. Uh, sometimes I think for, uh, for a lot of people it might be a challenge, but you, you you're taking a different approach. And from you know, what I see, the testimonials that you've gotten back, the feedback you've gotten back, it's really amazing feedback. I didn't even know that Andreas Antonopoulos even uh, was sort of also helpful in giving you uh, some kind of feedback, right, uh, during the process of your uh, publication work. Yeah, uh, well, I, uh, I reached out to him early on when we negotiated the contract with the, with the publisher Manning, because I wanted to publish this book open source. Uh, and I wasn't sure how to approach Manning about this. So I talked to Andreas Antonopoulos about it uh, and uh, he gave me some well, uh, some valuable feedback there. So gave me more or less uh, the courage to, to go on with my pursuit uh, in open sourcing it. So they finally agreed on, uh, on open source, some open source terms. So, and we published it open source this summer. Uh, so it's, it's freely available on GitHub right now. And I also have a, a generated version at uh, my personal website. This is great. If you yeah. want to, if you want to try before buy, you can you can just browse through the uh, uh, the content. It's uh, rosenbaum.se/book. Okay, to I'll put that up. later on in the show notes. Yeah. Um, so, Kalle, uh, what will, when you get like uh, feedbacks from your readers or other you know people uh, who either come from the, you know, technical computer or, or just layman, what is the, like, what do you have the feeling is are the biggest misconceptions or where the aha moments, you know, where people like, oh, I thought, I never understood this, but now I, I do understand. Uh, what, what is like the feedback you're getting, like when, when it comes to misconceptions or misunderstanding or just not comprehending, you know, how the principles work behind, uh, you know, the, the, the structure, the, um, and, and um, of, of Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure about uh, uh, what misconceptions I sort out. Uh, I, I haven't seen much of that in, uh, in the feedback, apart from the, the feedback has been like generally overwhelmingly positive. Um, people who, who have read the book has come up to me and said that they absolutely love the book. So I'm, 
extremely happy with that. But when it comes to aha moments, I'm not sure. I, I, it's very, very uh, individual, I guess, what people, uh, what kind of misconceptions people have. But uh, so I can't really answer that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you see, um, do you see um, more and more people getting interested um, who, who might come, you know, from the technical background, from the a pro a programming background, coding background, more and more focused into Bitcoin. So we will eventually have a, you know, a, we'll just call it an army of, of uh, really uh, beautifully contributing coders, uh, cryptographers, uh, programmers, developers, because the content, because the, you know, the understanding exp is expanding. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I think that the more the more content we put out there, the more good, uh, approachable content we we supply, uh, the better. Uh, just just look at the the number of participants and on conferences. It's just it's, it's exploded. Both the number of conferences and the number of attendees at, at the conferences it's just exploded in the, the last few years. So. Uh, uh, and I think that goes hand in hand with with the education. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I noticed at the, also at the Lightning Conference in Berlin, it's like it's it's amazing how many people from so different backgrounds and perspectives, and it's it's really a, a melting pot of people, you know, coming together and working, you know, for one cause, for whatever motivations and intentions. But it's uh, you know, it's because. Uh, it, uh, of, uh, as I see it, you know, for the ethos of it, for the bigger picture, bigger vision. And this is what, what really fascinates me, you know, the, the question uh, or, or the, the background of a lot of people, why do they come into this space in the first place and where do they end? Because, you know, we've all been, you know, through the, all this crypto hype and, and blockchain hype and, and bullshit hype and, and you know, and shit coinery. And it's really interesting how people, you know, um, that's why, um, I was going to maybe you know, ask you still in detail, what, is, what was your path to Bitcoin? What, what, what did you see when you first understood what Bitcoin is about? What, what kind of vision and, and roadmap did you see ahead of, um, of you know, for us, for all, for all of us, for humanity, for our society, for the monetary problems we have? Yeah, uh, those big questions, those big problems were, uh, um, I, didn't, I didn't focus much on them, on them in the beginning. Uh, it took me a few years before I started understanding money uh, and the world. I, I'm still trying to understand the world as it is today. Uh, it's, it's very, it's super complex. Money is super complex. So it's just in recent years that I actually started thinking about these big problems. <laughs> uh, before it was just, to me, it was just cool technology. I, I, I just, okay, it's, uh, I thought it was fantastic with, with money that you can't censor. But uh, I live in Sweden, which is a pretty open society. We have uh, uh, fairly, fairly okay leaders. And so, so um, uh, we don't see much of the problems that Bitcoin is solving in Sweden. So to me, it's not that uh, so, so it wasn't obvious to me why Bitcoin was was uh, was necessary. It's just uh, it's just in recent years that I started uh, reading about uh, other parts of the world. You know, the world is not just uh, my hometown where I live. <laughs> so yeah. So what what actually got me started in Bitcoin is just pure technology, like. Uh, how, how the system works, uh, more the, the how, not the why. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about Sweden and, you know, because I, you know, I, I'm, I got to know some, some Swedish people and I, I, uh, what I really admire is, you know, their, their sort of open-mindedness and, you know, as you say, it's a liberal, open society, right? What, what is the perception of people in, in Sweden when it comes to, you know, the, the monetary, you know, uh, uh, problems we have, um, or, or 
Well, what's the what's the um, not only in, our, in, in regards to Bitcoin, but what, what is what is what 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 do people what kind of what kind of feedback perceptions do people have about money? Yeah. Is there something to work on, or is it just good as it is? Uh, I think people in Sweden are pretty naive <laughs> about their money. Mm -hmm. I think most people uh, Sweden has gone very far when it comes to a cashless society. Uh, most payments today are credit cards, and uh, and we have a we have an app called Swish that the central bank uh, is uh, you know backing. So everyone more or less has a, a account at the central bank. So we can switch money uh, between each other uh, for free, and it's uh, super simple. And we have this uh, bank ID. We have we have a, an ID solution. The bank ID. So Swish in combination with bank ID is well, it's it's pretty good actually. So it's very simple to use, and everybody uses it. But cash is uh, is uh, um, it's very hard to to get around in Sweden with cash today. You can't buy lunch in most restaurants. Uh, really, wow. for for cash mm -hmm. and people, I. People tend to think this is a good thing. Uh, people tend to think that uh, it's it's good because the uh, people can do shady business with cash, but they they don't see the downside of it, uh, which is uh, uh, total surveillance. And I think that's unfortunate. I'm I'm not sure what this how this is going to end, but. Uh, uh, as it is now, cash is fast uh, on a very, very rapid decline in Sweden. And uh, I think that's a big problem. And I think people are too naive about it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But do people care in Sweden about privacy? I mean, uh, not, not much, not unfortunately. Much. No. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they were, uh, they would, uh, they would uh, refuse to to use mm -hmm. uh, uh, electronic money. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So that means they do. They, they also don't really care about if they were surveilled, like really abuse of surveillance. You know, this that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Of, of course, they don't want to be abused, uh, but they think they <clears throat> people have a very high uh, people trust government very much mm -hmm. uh, because historically the Swedish government has been pretty good, uh, not very corrupt. Um, pretty open. Uh, so, uh, so I think, uh, yeah. Uh, so people trust the government very much, and they. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Sorry, I, I, I no, no, that's okay. Because I want to know. I want to know when they read your book, like Swedish people reading your book. Do they understand the potential of Bitcoin? Like when I'm in Austria, you know, I mean, we've got the same problems actually, you know, uh, even, even though uh, like in p countries, German speaking countries like Austria, Germany, the, uh, uh, we still have, you know, a pretty heavy uh, uh, cash society. I mean, especially the Germans themselves, I think 80% uh, of them, they, are, they yeah. still insist on, on using cash. So we're coming back to this question, why Bitcoin? Because I always come back to the, you know, why should we trust me? And, and eventually, you know, people say, especially in Western comfortable countries, you know, developed countries, they say, why do we need Bitcoin? I mean, I got, you know, I empathize with them because why do they need Bitcoin? Uh, you know, you've got your ATM, yeah. you've got your credit card, you've got your cash, you've got, uh, you have the privilege sort of, of having a bank account. So there is no reason to use, the, you know, to, to use Bitcoin to you to buy your proverbial coffee. The question is again, um, do people understand the true potential, the bigger picture, the bigger vision behind Bitcoin? Um, uh, so what do they think, for example, about inflation, about the monetary economical problems we have? These are just, you know, symptoms that we might feel and see, but we have much, much bigger problems. And I see not only the problems, I see the potential, what we can do with Bitcoin. So this is what I'm going to, I'm trying to go into the direction with this question, like do, uh, Amongst other, you know, people or countries, do Swedish people, for example, understand 
what we can, what kind of society we can create, much more open, much more freer, much more, you know, uh, um, abundant, um, uh, advanced. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, most Swedes uh, are uh, think that uh, when inflation is something that's just a given. Uh, it's just a natural law uh, because that's what the economists say. They are, uh, yeah, so, and, and of course, uh, uh, um, they are pretty, pretty happy with cheap loans uh, because they can buy fancy houses but that they don't actually can afford. So it's, it's kind of people, people, uh, are, on an intellectual level, they would probably see a problem with this, uh, but on a on a daily day to day basis, uh, make a living uh, level, they they just they're pretty happy with it because they they can get cheap loans. Uh, so I, I very very few people actually think about the bigger pictures. I try to explain in, in the beginning of the, of the book, in chapter one, I try to explain the, explain the why of Bitcoin. Uh, I talk about inflation, I talk about uh, 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 surveillance, uh, seizing and freezing of funds and so forth. So I try, I try to set the stage on a global level there instead of just, you know, uh, Western world. So, so hopefully that, that will get people to think about the bigger picture when they think about Bitcoin. Yeah, because in order to you know to take an action or to to, uh, to understand, okay, this is where we're going. This is the reason. Um, this, this is the purpose of Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, people, the, is, is it, uh, um, what I what I observe is that the more I think about, it, the more um, we talk about this, it, it becomes clear how how deep the indoctrination, uh, the brainwashing has been going ongoing. You know, I mean, this is the uh, most people, as I you know, as probably you also know. When they get in touch with Bitcoin for the first time, they understand. Uh, they go into the rabbit hole, you know, of of what is money, how is it being created, and what is you know what is Keynesianism or Keynes? Uh, what is this whole monetary economical structures or the the central banking structures, which are literally above the law? Um, so, in order to you know to to take action to make a decision, um, one needs really to know the root causes of all the symptoms so this is what always fascinates me you know what's what's the perception what, what's what is really the comprehension level of people and I, you know i had to start somewhere too myself you know yeah. a few years ago and uh, there are some people who come and uh, i met a guy from norway i believe he was he, he already he went into the bitcoin space like in 2012 or 2013 and he had a friend who came from the libertarian background. Yeah. So th th it's very interesting how people, you know, find their path into Bitcoin, you know. But usually, most of most of the cases, which is good, you know, which is I think it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a it's a logical uh, a step by step learning process. Um, you be you begin to question, you know, the nature of money. Uh, what is it? Is is this really uh, is this really a logical, ethical, natural state of money or is it um, a condition or or has it been artificially fabricated and this is yeah. what we have and uh, in order to get there and i think we would have much more open-mindedness and approachability you know to yeah. bitcoin for a lot of people if uh, yeah if the root causes or the bigger picture was understood were, were to be understood yeah and i th i think uh it's a very, very high uh, learning curve if you want to understand money today, uh, because money today is so complex. It's so intertwined. You have central banks, banks, lenders, and uh, uh, you know uh, decision makers, <clears throat> and this system is extremely hard to understand. Uh, so, it's. I mean, it. it, it of of course, people is are not going to study this stuff because it's too hard. I mean, the people have better things to do with their lives, uh, they think. <laughs> uh, so, 
on the other hand, uh, a system based on some money like Bitcoin uh, is very easy to understand, I think. Uh, so, so going from this very hard system, very, very problematic system uh, that's extremely hard to learn and from there understand why Bitcoin is needed uh, is, ex is extremely hard because you need to understand this old legacy system. That's just people aren't going to understand it until they see their uh, economy break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point, yeah. good point. You see, um, and I've been talking to, you know, to a lot of in, uh, studio guests of mine and, and, and interview guests and um, um, in Sweden, of course, you know, I mean, I always have to be honest, I heard a lot of, you know, positive stories about, about Sweden because they're so progressive, they're open-minded, you know, it's, they think ahead, they, uh, the liberal principles. I mean, this is what I hear, you know, yeah. even on the social, but I know that there's a lot of really serious problems right now because of the global implication, because of all these, you know, artificially created conditions, which create those problems also for the society, for people, for, uh, um, uh, uh, for the public. But the thing is, when do people, when once people, as you said, you know, they feel and they see that the pain points um, you know, like economy breaking down because now it's everything intertwined and interlocked. So, and in Sweden, well, it's part of the global system. So, uh, and, and, and there's, you know, it's not me saying it, but a lot of experts, whether the Austrian economists or really people who've gone into the rabbit hole and well-known really economists uh, in, in Austria, in Germany, in, in Europe, they're saying, you know, the recession is going to come by the end of next year. And uh, the, 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 a lot of banks can crash. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen to the euro. Inflation could be really uh, one of the ven venues which we could go into. So, uh, and th this will have a chain reaction effect on other countries too. And yes. Sweden is not isolated. I think this is what people need to understand. So, wouldn't it be better to think ahead and to you know, uh, allocate a small percentage into Bitcoin, have a, you know, and, and as a whatever uh, safe haven or um, capital uh, sort of uh, um, uh, preservation, uh, what have you. So uh, it's it's probably not um, because of our also of our, which is, you know, in Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin standard, uh, Safed and Amus book, the, the, the exploration of low time and high price, preference we we live in a high time preference society where people are not able it's become you know so sort of indoctrinated to us not to think ahead maybe we can think of tomorrow than the day after tomorrow even in terms of risks yeah. or dangers so uh, i think it's a real challenge for for individuals for society for humanity to to feel to to understand you know into the what's coming up you know uh, and it could be next year it could literally be next year or 2021 uh, where all these things that, that are taking place right now globally and just starting in the European Union could just unfold like really by order of magnitude. And this is what I find a little bit disturbing and sad that people are not getting it. Because yeah. on the one hand, yet, you know, it's preserving your wealth, you know, you you sort of um, you can you can uh, live the principles you know of, of decentralization of free choice of freedom of censorship resistance on the other hand I see a much bigger picture and that is you know, the true potential of Bitcoin what we can literally deroute this old uh, what do you want to call it criminal and, and exploitative and abusive system and and just transform it with new roots yeah uh, yes, I agree. <laughs> uh, I heard you talked about this with Adam Back. I listened to your last show with Adam Back. Uh, uh, and I think it's uh, uh, actually every responsible investor should keep a small percentage of, of their wealth in Bitcoin as a hedge, uh, as you talked about with Adam Back. I think that's really important. Uh, uh, regarding regarding the economy, how bad it is, uh, I for sure can't say how bad it is because I don't understand the world enough, and I guess nobody does. 
so we can just uh, you know uh, guess but you can apply some common sense to the world as we live in today. We have inflation. Well, what does, what's, what do, does that mean? What's the implications of inflation? Well, that uh, uh, incentivizes cons consumption, for example. And consumption uh, uh, causes pollution. And creating money out of thin air, well, uh, uh, who, who gains from that? And so, if you just apply common sense, you don't have to be a, a PhD in economics or, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, you don't have to be an economist to, to, um, to apply some common sense. And when you start to think about uh, a fixed money supply, what that would have, what kind of implications that would have on society, it's, it's you know, you start thinking in, along those lines, uh, you, you can come quite far with just some, some common sense without prior knowledge on economics. Just apply your common sense. That's, my <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Um, and it's taken me quite far, though I can't cite Mises <laughs> and uh, Rothbard and, and those guys. Yeah, uh, it, is, it is really a deep uh, rabbit hole. So do you think that the, the kids uh, or the younger people, younger generations are, are being, you know, being born into this new realm, new space, are getting it much quicker and they, they have the much bigger potential to understanding it and, you know, understanding the principles the, and the reason, uh, you know, the question of why Bitcoin? Would, would that be a huge potential? I'm, like I'm, teaching not, I'm not sure. Uh, they are born into this world as we have it today. Bitcoin is not, uh, you know, omnipotent today. Uh, it's not. Bitcoin is not everywhere. So we still live in the in the legacy world with with unsound money. They are born into this world where where with easy uh, uh, easy money, cheap lending. So I I am not sure. Uh, their their parents have huge mortgages uh, and they live under inflation. I, I, I don't know uh, if they, well, they are more tech, tech savvy. Uh, they can use apps, of course, but I'm not sure that helps that much. So I, I'm not sure if they are more uh, um, perceptive of Bitcoin than uh, an older generation. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. I, hope, I, I certainly hope so, but but I, I, I'm I'm a bit skeptical there. <laughs> I see. Um, who do you think is the average reader of the book? The average reader. Uh, I wrote the book for 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 uh, technically interested non-developers, uh, mm -hmm. but also developers. But but I mean. The minimum qualified reader is a technically interested person who is not necessarily a developer. But I think the typical de uh, reader is a developer. Uh, I mean, most readers, I think, are developers, mm -hmm. uh, anyhow. But I, I'm, I'm not sure about you. Are, are you are you a developer in any no, way? No, no, I'm not. No, no. So, so you are the perfect target audience for the book. I, I, I'd say um, that. It was you I had in mind when I when I wrote it. Yeah, that's why I'm so excited about this book because it really uh, you don't have to, like to read the whole book to to understand you know the the, the the communication of your comprehension and 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 you know the facts the reality of Bitcoin like understanding the principles what 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 purpose does it fulfill yeah. you know it, it goes into the deeper deeper question of why Bitcoin you know what does it do. You know, what is it for? Good, for, it's it, yeah. it it has to have some meaning, some sense of it, make some some sense of it in order to go into that rabbit hole. And this yeah. is what I think triggers a lot of people. Then it's like, hmm, maybe I should look more into this. You know, maybe I I um, finally should have some kind of skin in the game, start experimenting, start start playing around with it, and then you're going you know into all kinds of rabbit holes with that. Yeah. I want to add that uh, uh, it is a it is a very highly technical deep dive 
into Bitcoin. So it's, it's highly technical, uh, but it's at the same time tries to explain why we use certain technologies and what we want to achieve. But, but the book is pretty deep. It's mm -hmm. well, almost a, as deep as uh, Andrea Santanopoulos book, but we d explain stuff in different ways. Yeah. Uh, so I think we are complementing each other. Uh, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. I love that when when things are complementing one another because it's you know it puts things into perspective. It gives it you know a more holistic approach. Do do people like uh, or do you think that your book has the potential to make out of this uh, you know like ad, an addendum sort of you know like additional uh, workshops maybe you know for interested people who want to you know develop this more or put this into practical usage. Uh, I'm not sure I understood the question there, but it, do, do you mean if if uh, if we could build some kind of courses around the book? Or yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking about it. Uh, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, book for a course on self sovereignty. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, become become a, become a power user of Bitcoin. So I, I'm thinking about. Uh, a course for non-developers, uh, well, and developers who want to, I mean, start using Bitcoin in a very, uh, in, uh, without, without trusting third parties uh, and long-term storage and stuff like that. So I think, I think, uh, I think this book would, would be a pretty good basis for, for a course. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I think it would really empower people to, to go on their own paths you know, and develop yes. this. It's all about, you know, trial and error. It's a learning process. I think there's a huge, uh, uh, still whether it's, you know, the, let's say in the, in the bigger picture of Bitcoin or lightning network, it's, it's there's problems still to be solved, yes. you know, whether it's whatever, you know, scalability, speed, uh, the, the fees to be paid, the, the adoption, you know, the user interface, user experience, um, the, the, the very, you know, uh, for non layman it's not understandable, of course, for layman people, but the, the intricate uh, technical aspects of it, I think there's a lot of challenges, right, to be solved. Where yeah. do you see those challenges where maybe new potentially, you know, capable people could come into this space and learn from one another? Where, where do you see the potential of improvement, optimization, um, as a computer scientist? <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, I'm, again, I'm not sure I understand the question, uh, but I ask, uh, I'll answer a question that I think you might have asked. Mm -hmm. sure. um, I, I, I think uh, for Bitcoin to be resilient against uh, uh, authoritative regimes uh, and stuff like that, we need users that understand the core principles of Bitcoin. Because if people don't understand the core principles, they are easily fooled and they, uh, so, so, so Bitcoin need a, a, needs a very broad base of users who won't fall for tricks, uh, who will run their own node, enforce their own, the, the rules that they believe in. Uh, because otherwise Bitcoin wouldn't be censorship resistant. Bitcoin wouldn't be uh, resilient. So, so this book tries to teach people enough so that they can understand the, the core principles so that they can enforce the rules that they think are important. And that's, uh, uh, David Harding writes about this in the foreword of the book, uh, which I recommend you read. Uh, he writes about Bitcoin needs users that understand the core principles to preserve the resilience of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if I asked, answered your question here. I think, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it goes into this, exactly this direction. You mentioned full node. Okay. And, and, I, and I understand, you know, there's this also like, uh, you know, as I also said a couple of times, this this progression level. That also, uh, you know, that uh, Stephen Levera talked for the first time this progression level of going from an exchange, you know, and then getting a hardware wallet and getting your full node and connecting your full node to your hardware wallet. Do you, um, in order to become, you know, a fully 
so self-sovereign citizen, Bitcoin citizen, you know, totally independent. You are your own central bank, sort of. You are fully sovereign. You, you help, you know, secure the network. You help, uh, you validate your own transactions. Do you think it go? It is going at the pace, at a rate of speed, which it should be going. Or do you think it should be? We should really be, you know, jacking up the speed of people getting their own full node in whatever way, whether it's a plug and play from Casa, which I think, you know, still from a price level, it could, uh, there's a huge space for improvements uh, for the average person speaking. Uh, or do you think it's still way too complicated, complex, technical to set up your own full node? Because, you know, in the end, what is it about? It's about censorship resistance. It's about, you know, being independent, yeah. not be, not having to rely on third parties, third providers. Yeah, I I think people uh, overestimate the uh, the complexity of setting up your full uh, your own full node. It's not that it's it is not that hard, uh, okay. especially if you're on the GUI version. Uh, and regarding speed, if I think uh, adoption of full nodes is fast enough, I don't know. I I. I think so. I mean, it has the adoption rate. It has. We can't. Uh, there's little we can do to uh, to increase the speed. Well, we can write books and so forth. But uh, I I think Bitcoin has the adoption. It has, and we if 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 I. Wanna if I, I if I want to increase increase adoption, well I can write a book, but there's not there's no one who can say, oh we need more nodes, so please everybody uh, install new nodes. It's it's not that Bitcoin has the adoption it it, it deserves or, or has. So mm -hmm. okay, um, and I think it's fairly alright today today. Um, I, I don't think Bitcoin needs faster adoption on any level, which is, uh, I, th I think the, the adoption has been uh, uh, overwhelming, actually, the last 10 years. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm, I totally agree with you. It's just that I th I'm thinking already ahead as a preventive measure. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, uh, we, we cannot be ready enough. This is my concern is that once things really fall in place, it would be good if really millions and millions of people were to have their own full load. This is what I think. Yes. Uh, yeah. But uh, also at the same time, if millions and millions of people run their own full node and start using Bitcoin more, uh, technology might not uh, keep up with the adoption uh, pace. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, we need to scale Bitcoin on a, you know, uh, scale slowly, uh, scale uh, responsibly. And so I, I'm not sure. I, I'm happy with a very slow adoption rate. Uh, but of course, of course, uh, the more the more people that that uh, protects Bitcoin's core values, the better. Mm -hmm. Uh, there seems to be, because I'm not technical, there was discussion of Andres Antonopoulos in his talks, in his presentations. Uh, there seems to be a controversial discussion of privacy on the protocol layer, on the base layer. That's what he's saying, Andres Antonopoulos is saying, the privacy should be solved or should have been solved or should, or is, is, is the only way to be solved on the first layer. And, and, some, and some people or other people there seem to be segmented groups who talk about the privacy layer that can only be solved on the second layer. Can you comment on that a little bit? What is this discussion about? Uh, say both. I mean, there are privacy uh, improvements to be made on on, on the base layer, uh, but obviously we have we have Lightning Network with improved privacy. Uh, well, you can you you can see you can see the channels on the base layer, but you can't see every individual transaction on the base layer. Uh, so, so you can add, you can improve privacy on the base layer, and you can improve privacy on uh, layers above. I think. I mean, Lightning does it. So, but there are some people who argue that Lightning is actually base layer. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because 
reasons. Okay. So, Carla, do you do you do you see other fundamental problems which you maybe in your opinion could where you know developers or uh, you know the technical people could more or should have more concerted effort um, in cooperation in in solving problems instead of you know uh, I mean discussion is always good you know exchange of thoughts and all these conferences taking place but from your perspective the other pro other uh, features, uh, uh, um, functions, uh, um, you know, problems to be solved, which could be more done efficiently together, as you know, as a more efficient teamwork. Or, yeah, maybe maybe that's the case, but uh, uh, may, maybe it would be more efficient, uh, but it's not the way it is. Uh, development is the way it is because people, you know, have different views on how to scale Bitcoin and uh, how to make it more private. Uh, so, so I think development has to be, uh, you know, fairly diverse and uh, um, adverse, uh, adversary even. Um, so I, I think, I think uh, this, the, the landscape we're in right now is pretty healthy. I, 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 and I, I, I don't, I don't think we need more efficient. Uh, I don't know decision making. Uh, who's to make the decisions anyway? <laughs> so, um, in the end, it's up to the users to select the software they want to use, and the rules they want to apply to the blockchain. So, um, I, no. So I, I, I don't think we need to make it more efficient in any, in, a, in any way. Maybe it could be made more efficient, but I don't think we need to make it more efficient but we, because we can't make it more efficient because this, uh, the, the landscape is what it is because it's a decentralized yeah. uh, 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 environment. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, what is, what is the roadmap? Uh, for yourself now in, in connection with this book? What is the roadmap? What, what are the next steps you want to take? I mean, teaching or, I don't know, <laughs> uh, yeah. empowering people. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still uh, in the dark there, <laughs> actually. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, creating some kind of course around it. Uh, maybe write another book uh, or just work on software development. Um, I had this uh, um, consultancy firm. I, I, I do consultancy work within Bitcoin, uh, half time, uh, and uh, other half is uh, to, I, I do whatever I want with. So uh, me and my wife have got a two or three multi-sig wallet project. Uh, that we've been working on quite quite a while now, but it's going it's going really slowly. But uh, we try to make a super simple two or three air gapped uh, multi sig wallet. Oh wow! Well, Excited. Uh, okay. It's a single purpose uh, two or three segwit only multi sig wallet. So we'll we'll see how that evolves. It's still early. Mm -hmm. So there's books, there's courses, there are, uh, and there's, uh, you know, uh, our own little pet project. So I don't know, to be, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, you said you have a consulting firm. Um, yeah. What I want to know, what I'm interested in is that the people you, you consult with or you work with, um, what's the reaction? I mean, what, what, what demands do they have when it comes to, you know, to aspects like decentralization, central, do they get it or... Uh, or do they want to do their own centralized stuff with with that what you're offering with that's with the sober, with those services you are and consulting with? yeah uh, it it differs quite a lot on on uh, the customers uh, mm -hmm. on my clients uh, perceptions on on that uh, i i i just want to add that i'm i'm consulting as a developer so i mm -hmm. i do you know developing services for for bitcoin companies so and and that doesn't necessarily have to do with Bitcoin all the time. So okay. mm -hmm. I I do a lot of you know general backend programming uh, that sometimes doesn't have anything to do with Bitcoin. 
but I, I work for Bitcoin companies because I want to work in that space. So yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah. So Khaled, in conclusion, do you, uh, is there anything fundamentally important you think people should look into, uh, should educate themselves on, should listen to, besides, you know, of course they should definitely read, read your book. I can only recommend this to everybody, uh, whether, you know, one is technical or not, because you get a, really a, a much, much more substantial fundamental understanding of those principles. And are there any like really important uh, things from your position right now that we, you, you should you know you really want to emphasize to people out there to my listeners? Yeah, run your own full node. <laughs> take take a day uh, and try to get a full node running on your computer mm -hmm. and use it. Not just if if you don't use it for to verify your own transactions, you're not actually using it really. Uh, so. Set up your full node, uh, use a wallet that can connect to your own full node as a trusted node, uh, and, and use that. That's my, that's my two cents. Or, yeah. Wonderful. So um, I will put your, uh, your Twitter handle is at Kalle Rosenbaum. Anybody yes. who want, uh, wants to follow you. Um, let me see, you also have, uh, the, is that the, your publisher, manning.com? Yes, that's right. And you've got a github.com slash color Rosenbaum at, uh, slash uh, grokking Bitcoin, that's what I'm gonna add to. And yes. the book is also available on Amazon, of course, where you can also have a, a sneak preview into the book. Um, and yeah, any, any other information or links or uh, website you might have? Yeah, you can go to Kaleru. Uh, sorry, rosenbaum.se slash book. Okay, I'll add that uh, too. Yeah, because because that's where I keep my uh, generated version of the open source book. Because the open source version is not quite, uh, it's not really readable. You have to download it, you have to build it with on Linux with special uh, tools. So uh, in if you just want to try before buy, you can go to rosenbaum.se slash book to just... Okay, I'll add that too. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Carl. Well, thanks so much, Carl, for your time and for you know, sharing your thoughts, knowledge and wisdom. Um, I can, uh, hope we can you know, uh, repeat this uh, discussion or maybe continue discussion in the in a, in a framework of a, of a panel discussion. That would be also very interesting in the future. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any final thoughts, just let me know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. thank you so much, uh, Kevan. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. Have a good time and uh, <laughs> say greetings to Sweden. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye-bye.